Hello everyone, welcome back to our course Applied Cryptology. In the first week we talk about historical ciphers, all of them were like pen and paper methods. So now we are moving on to modern ciphers and we will start with block ciphers. Block ciphers are most probably the most used encryption algorithms in the world. Most of the encrypted data in the world belongs to the uh, obtained via block ciphers. So for this reason, we are going to be spending a few weeks on this topic. So let's start with an introduction and see the idea behind it. And in the following weeks, we will be seeing uh, block ciphers uh, in a detailed way. So let's first, let's first talk about encoding. Historical ciphers mostly operate on letters since they are pen and paper methods. When working with digital data, we can represent letters, numbers, symbols, etc., as strings of bits. So we are actually representing the characters in terms of bytes in the digital world. Thus, the communicating parties must first agree on an encoding. So ASCII is the most known uh, encoding, I think, because it is the American standard. But since this encoding technique does not contain uh, special characters that are included in some languages. For instance, in Turkish, we have uh, some letters like Ö and uh, soft G, which are not included in this table. So for this reason, you have to be using uh, different encodings like UTF-8 and so on to communicate in your language. Although this is obvious and it is, uh, we assume that this is a solved problem, we still see examples where encoding fails. So, uh, but still we, for the rest of the course, we assume that communicating parties are uh, agreed on an encoding, so they understand what they're talking about. So here's an example of the ASCII table. Uh, since every character is represented by a byte, which is just eight bits, so at most you can represent two to the eight characters, which is 256. For this reason, this table starts from zero to uh, and goes until 255. Actually, the second part is the extended uh, table, uh, but the first part is actually the original part, let's say. Uh, as far as I know, in this table, we have 96 characters that can be printed on screen. So when you are uh, choosing a password, these are the characters that you can use. And the letter starts at uh, 65 with capital A and goes in this way. So. Again, we just assume that uh, communicating parties agree on an encoding. Before we start uh, with modern cryptography, let's talk about some of the problems uh, that cryptography solves. And the main uh, topic that we can talk is confidentiality. Cryptography solves this problem. So most of the time we are communicating in a insecure channel but cryptography provides secure communication over insecure channel. And this can be done by block ciphers, stream ciphers, or public key encryption algorithms like RSA and so on. Also, authenticated encryption algorithms provide confidentiality. Another problem that is solved is data authentication. Here we also solve the problem of uh, data integrity. This can be done by hash functions, message authentication codes, or again by authenticated encryption and so on. We also solve the problem of entity authentication and we also solve the problem of origin non repudiation by most of the time digital signatures. So cryptography has a lot of different areas and solves a lot of problems. So for this reason uh, in this talk, in this course we will be uh, trying to mentioning all of these topics. But here we will start with confidentiality and we will start with symmetric key encryption algorithms. So first we need to talk about block ciphers, but then we will move on to stream ciphers, message authentication codes, and so on, the hash functions and so on. So uh, let's try to classify cryptographic algorithms. Uh, we can, uh, actually this is not an easy job, but let's say that we can uh, divides cryptographic algorithms into two as keyless algorithms like cryptographic hash functions. These algorithms does not use a secret key, but we also have keyed algorithms like secret key and public key cryptography. 
these are also known as symmetric key cryptography and asymmetric key cryptography. Today's topic will be on the symmetric key cryptography, in other words, secret key cryptography. Secret key algorithms use the same key material for both encryption and decryption, hence the name symmetric key cryptography. There are three types of algorithms in this category, block cipher, stream ciphers, and message authentication codes, shortened as MEX. And this should not be confused with uh, media access control. Okay, in the cryptography course, when we say MAC, we are referring to message authentication codes. And these are not encryption algorithms, by the way. They, and we will see them in detail in a few weeks. So block ciphers and stream ciphers are encryption primitives, while the message authentication code is used for data and data origin authentication. So there is no encryption involved in message authentication codes. But these three topics are not independent. We can use a block cipher to build both a stream cipher and the message authentication code, or we can even create a keyless hash function. So we will be mentioning all of these topics independently. But in order to understand actually all of them, uh, when the course is over, I suggest you to go back and uh, listen all of these lectures again. And this way, I believe uh, you will have a better understanding of the uh, topics of cryptography. Asymmetric crypto systems are somewhat different because there are different types of algorithms involved. Uh, they in these algorithms in include key agreement algorithms, public key encryption algorithms, and digital signature algorithms. And probably we will be talking about them in the last weeks of this lecture, of this course. So let's start with a few definitions. What is a crypto system? Uh, plain text is what you want to protect. And a crypto system is a pair of algorithms that convert plain text to ciphertext and back. So ciphertext is the encrypted version of the plain text. And ciphertext should appear like a random sequence. So here is the idea. You have the plain text. This can be a file in your com computer. This can be a message that you are sending via an SMS or via WhatsApp, or uh, this could be your GSM communication, just your voice. So uh, since we are going to be using insecure channels, we need an encryption. So a crypto system or a cipher is just an encryption decryption pair of encryption and decryption algorithms. So it takes your plain text and uses some kind of a secret material that we are going to say secret key and uh, it will transform it into a ciphertext. And we assume the ciphertext falls into the hands of the enemy because we are uh, communicating through insecure channels and we are assuming that everybody can capture the ciphertext and in reality, this is the case. You can always capture the ciphertext. But it should appear like a random sequence so that it should not contain any uh, trivial information about the plain text. So without the secret information, uh, an adversary should not be able to obtain some parts of the plain text from the cipher text. So a good crypto system would uh, provide a cipher text that doesn't have any information about the plain text. And the person who has the secret information can decrypt the cipher text and obtain the plain text. In symmetric crypto systems, we have a secret key and keys used for encryption and decryption are identical or they are closely related. In other words, one can be obtained from the other in polynomial time. In asymmetric key cryptography, we will have two keys. One is secret and one is public. Public can be used for encryption and the secret one will be used for decryption and so on. But for this lecture, we are going to be talking about symmetric crypto system. So we have a single secret key. Block ciphers are uh, one of the uh, uh, encryption primitives of symmetric key encryption algorithms. So block ciphers operate on B-bit blocks of data. Plain text is divided into B-bit blocks. Each block is encrypted by a secret key K to produce B-bit output. Output blocks form the cipher text. So instead of trying to uh, design an algorithm that works on uh, many different input sizes, 
Block ciphers just focus on fixed input length and provides the same fixed output length. So this way, uh, regardless of the size of the uh, plain text, for instance, you can uh, encrypt a file on your computer that can be a few bytes, a few kilobytes or a few gigabytes, it doesn't matter. Block cipher will be working on bits blocks of data. And in practice, uh, most of the ciphers we have uses B as 64 bits or 128 bits. So most of the time we are uh, encrypting eight bytes or 16 bytes at a time. So we talk about this in the first week in the historical ciphers. Uh, we said that uh, algorithms that are uh, encrypting uh, or substituting pair, pairs of letters actually led to the invention of block ciphers. So you can see this as a substitution of eight characters or 16 characters at a time. So if you look at the picture, uh, if your block size is B bits, this means that you can have two to the B different inputs as your plain text. And the cipher text block, the output of the uh, block cipher will be again two to the B bits elements. So a block cipher and the chosen key is actually a permutation from two to the B elements to the two to the B elements. And uh, generally as the key size, we are using 128, 192 or 256 bits, depending on the security you want for personal use. We know that uh, this much key material is enough for current technology. And for military use, we suggest 256 bits of secret key. So how, how many permutations we, can we have from two to the B elements to, the, to itself? Since uh, first, uh, uh, first block can be sent to two to the B different values, the second one can be sent to two to the B minus one elements and so on. This means that we can have two to the B factorial different permutations, which is approximately this, and it is a very huge number. So there are a huge number of permutations available. And when you design a block cipher and choose a key, actually you will be selecting a small subset of this huge space. So if you design something good, a, a good block cipher means that the keys you are selecting from this, these permutations you are selecting from this huge space are actually good permutations. So a block cipher will provide only a tiny fraction of all these available permutations for a typical values of B and K, namely two to the K. So two to the K is far less than this uh, number. For security, for any chosen K, uh, we expect a good block cipher to act like as if it is a random selected permutation. Even more, we expect no relation between permutations that are obtained by keys that are related somehow. We will return to this when we are going to be talking about related key cryptanalysis. So how can we design a good block cipher? Uh, block cipher design principles goes back to Claude Shannon who is considered as the father of information theory. He contributed to the field of cryptanalysis for USA defense during World War II. His landmark paper, Communication Theory of Secrecy Systems from 1949, introduced the Tivin ideas of confusion and diffusion for practical cipher design. So confusion means to make the relation between the simple statistics of the cipher text and the simple description of the key a very complex and involved one. And diffusion is defined as the statistical structure of the plain text, which leads to its redundancy. This is dissipated into long range statistics in the cryptogram. But note that these concepts, uh, confusion and diffusion, are not measurable absolute concepts. So these definitions are somewhat abstract. Massey actually simplified these definitions and said that confusion is. The ciphertext statistics should depend on the plain text statistics in a manner too complicated to be exploited by the cryptanalyst. 
And for diffusion, each digit of the plain text and each digit of the secret key should influence many digits of the cipher text. So we will understand these topics when we are going to see uh, concrete examples of block ciphers and how this confusion and diffusion layers actually designed in practice. So uh, you can design a block cipher in many ways, but generally we group them as in two, namely substitution permutation network, shortly SPN, and phase time network. And uh, instead of designing a very huge algorithm, which would be very complicated, we just choose to design a, a round function and repeat it many times so that it will be easier to implement and also easier to analyze. Also, we have a, a key schedule algorithm. Since we are going to use a secret key, uh, we need to decide how we are going to use this information in every round. So instead of using the key directly in every round, a key schedule algorithm is used so that uh, generates round keys from the secret key. 